on the remote northeast coast of Costa Rica is a wild and beautiful corridor of the Atlantic lowland rainforest, a little known natural treasure, rich beyond imagination in the abundance and variety of its tropical vegetation and wildlife, home of the caiman and the crocodile, and hundreds of fascinating species, birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and insects, including the handsome red lorid parrot, and colorful members of the iguana family. In the lush canopy of this enchanting Costa Rican paradise, noisy troops of black-mantled howler monkeys may be observed. There are no roads in the area, only water highways, the Palacio and the Caño Palma, the river of palms. Our destination is the Caño Palma Biological Research Station. Our guide, Marilyn Cole, who, with her husband and a dedicated group of Costa Rican and Canadian supporters, established this wilderness haven for the study, preservation, and enjoyment of a small corner of the world's endangered rainforest. Upon arrival, Marilyn is greeted by station manager Greg Main. To begin with, my husband and I had thought that it would be very nice to be able to purchase a small piece of the tropical rainforest and do our part to preserve it for posterity. And from there we thought, well, wouldn't it be nice to be able to share this with researchers and others because there's been very little uh, study done, particularly in this area of Costa Rica. So the idea of a research station has evolved from that, a very simple beginning. This small but comfortable and efficient research station is a recent addition to the region. A few Canadian and Costa Rican students come here with their rubber boots, rain gear, hats and sunblock, notebooks and binoculars. Other students, nature tourists, photographers and scientific researchers are welcome, if there's room. But always with one objective in mind, to disturb the natural ecosystem as little as possible. Wild orchids splatter the thick green foliage with a rainbow of subtle colors. Translucent tree frogs may be sighted, possibly an undiscovered species looking for a name, or a dazzling myriad of moths and butterflies, hundreds of magnificently patterned species. Flying creatures and crawling creatures, anoles and lizards of the most original design and creation. The many sights and sounds of the tropical rainforest are here in Costa Rica's Caño Palma region, a place to explore and preserve. Soon after her arrival, Marilyn Cole is off hiking through the rainforest in search of the howler monkey, but eager to observe and record whatever she finds here on this hot and humid day in mid-January. Back in Toronto, Ontario, Marilyn works at the splendid Metro Zoo while working towards a postgraduate degree in environmental studies. I intend to continue my studies, my university studies, by doing my master's degree down here at the Canyon Palma Biological Station on the howler monkey. There's very little known about the uh, howler monkey in this particular area. Most of the studies have been done on island populations where they've been constrained by the uh, very idea of an island. And so I feel that there must be differences in a free-ranging group of monkeys that are able to go wherever they feel like they want to go within their range. Sometimes it's not too difficult to find the howlers, Marilyn says, if they are shaking the branches or making their characteristic calls which carry for great distances. Largest of the New World monkeys, intelligent and highly territorial, even with other troops of howlers, they move swiftly and easily through their canopy domain. I've had the good fortune to uh, do some studies in Indonesia 
uh, with the orangutans uh, under the uh, tutelage of uh, Dr. Birute Galdicus. And I've also uh, studied some uh, Barbary macaques in Gibraltar under Dr. Francis Burton. Uh, well, this works in very nicely with my work at the Metro Toronto Zoo, where I do work with primates, although they're the great apes. I work with the gorillas, but I'm also fascinated by all sorts of primates. Cradled in Marilyn's lap, but getting a little restless, is Jomo, a gentle, playful little charmer, youngest of the Metro Zoo gorillas. Jomo wanders away for a moment, but soon returns. And then, well, just one more time, under the bridge. Jomo's mother was unable to supply milk, so he was hand-reared by the zoo staff, given much the same care and attention a human mother would provide for her child, looking after feeding and health needs, and making the young one feel secure. This is Charles, Jomo's father, over 400 pounds and a 20-year-old silverback who has been at the zoo since two years of age. Hand-reared baby gorillas imprint easily on their human surrogate parents, so Jomo spends a lot of time with his family and siblings so he can be raised in the ways and skills of the great apes. This is 14-month-old Sakani playing with her family babysitter, nine-year-old Catherine, who is not yet a mature adult, but learning to be a mother through first-hand experience, up and away for a romp in the rafters. And a climb into a rooftop hammock. While down below, Charles, the silverback patriarch, scratches an itch. Later, Sakani is seen riding on the back of her mother, Samantha. They don't know it, but they're part of a scientific experiment involving Marilyn. A raisin feeder has been set up, and Samantha is seen using a primitive tool, a twig with a carved point, to dig raisins from the small holes. Until now, it was thought that gorillas could not use tools. It is expected that Sakani may learn this skill from observing her mother. Then, time to hitch another ride on Mother's back. Back on the Cano Palma River in Costa Rica, near Caribbean beaches where giant sea turtles come ashore to nest, our exploration of the coastal lowland rainforest continues with a closer look at the red lorid parrot with its red forehead and powder blue crown. Its range is from Mexico to Brazil, Equipped with a powerful bill that can crack nutshells, it's a ravenous fruit eater and can strip a tree, although much of the fruit it dislodges falls to the ground, providing food for other species. Just what are we looking at here? It takes a trained eye to identify this well-camouflaged lizard. Here's a colorfully striped inhabitant of the forest we better be able to identify. Although our chances of accidentally bumping into one are slight. It's a coral snake, one of several venomous reptile species resident in the region. This alert and curious creature is a young basilisk lizard. It's semi-aquatic, feeds on plants and insects, and is often referred to as the Jesus Christ lizard. Because it is so fast, it appears to walk, well, actually run across the water. Its toes are well adapted for carrying out this amazing illusion. 
It also leaps through the trees and shrubs with great agility, but has decided to remain still and watch us. Our journey on the river continues. Marilyn catches sight of something ahead in the aquatic vegetation by the riverbank. A caiman, a snub-nosed relative of the crocodile, with strong jaws and teeth, and a powerful tail used for swimming and as a weapon. It is a meat and fish eater. It sometimes snacks at the aquatic salad buffet. When not keeping an eye on intruders of the human kind. Marilyn continues to scan the landscape until another species is observed, an iguana. But iguanas have a habit of jumping into the water when disturbed and then disappear. Nearby, another iguana is sighted, about a meter in size, in orange and green courtship colors, with its distinctive back crest of spines. Then another iguana, bobbing its head up and down and pushing out its throat pouch, or dewlap, in a sometime courtship display, but also a territorial threat, telling us to move on. and a fourth iguana, demonstrating his climbing and jumping abilities. The iguanas live in deep burrows in the riverbank, so this one could be starting to make his way home or to some courtship rendezvous. One of the great architects and nest builders of the bird kingdom resides in this tree, laying its eggs in complex, ingenious hanging baskets, nests woven mostly from grasses brought to the site by the look-alike parents. The bird is the oropendula, here the Montezuma oropendula, a highly social species. As many as 25 pairs nest in one tree. They also have a high wire act they like to demonstrate. The Montezuma oropendula is a handsome, industrious, chestnut colored bird. Once constructed, the hanging nests must be constantly maintained and repaired. Both parents feed the young. The long, pendulous nests sway in the wind, like rocking cradles. One more look at that high wire act. The amazing Montezuma Aura Pendulum. As one might expect, the rainfall is heavy here in the coastal rainforest of northeast Costa Rica. Some months more than others. And enough to keep the forest growing in some swamp-like areas wet year-round. After a downpour, the air is so hot and humid, you just keep walking to dry off. Marilyn pauses to examine an abandoned bird's nest. With Marilyn is Juan, a Costa Rican-born member of the Biological Research Station staff. Juan knows the area and is very knowledgeable about the behavior and movements of the local wildlife species. <laughs> 